The Vivo Z1 X is typical of what a smartphone looks like today with a metallic looking frame and a glass looking back. Now, the, while the frame is not metallic, the back, I did think that the back was glass, although it's not. The Z1 X opts to go with a flatter back compared to the Z1 Pro, which had a more curved back for better ergonomics. That said, the Z1 X is smaller than the Z1 Pro, which means that although this is flat, there is not really a big loss in ergonomics. The back is clean this time around because the fingerprint scanner has gone below the display. The camera housing hosts three cameras and a separate LED flash. The colors are very appealing too, and this one I unofficially call the Barcelona edition, but it looks like a unique gradient pattern. Now, there are other colors on the Vivo Z1 X as well, but I do like this one a lot. Now, for the first time, a Vivo phone under 30,000 moves to a USB Type-C, probably why they had the USB Type-C packaged above the phone. So when I unbox the phone, you actually had the USB Type-C coming before the phone was placed inside the box. But you do get the USB Type-C with a headphone jack and a single speaker grill. The headphone jack output is pretty nice and the speaker grill is standard, nothing out of the ordinary. The Z1X, also like some previous Vivo phones, comes with three hardware buttons, a power button, a volume rocker, and a special Google Assistant button, which I appreciate a lot. Of course, I would have appreciated the ability to customize it even more because even though I use it mostly for Google Assistant, a lot of people don't use Google Assistant, so they might want to do that for different other things, maybe a camera shutter button. All in all, I think the Vivo Z1X is a typically well-designed Vivo phone. The Vivo Z1X moves from a punch hole LCD panel to a water drop notch on an AMOLED display and this is the second big change that I absolutely support. The AMOLED display just handles that contrast ratio like a madman and the colors that come out are punchy and lifelike. Now the Full HD Plus resolution also makes it plenty crisp. There of course is the characteristic color shift that AMOLED displays have but it's well under control. There is Widevine L1 support right out of the box which means that you won't have a problem streaming HD content on online platforms. Watching movies on an AMOLED display is truly fun and yes, at times I do wish it was still the punch hole but I'll take the compromise. The display also does not have any light bleed truly because this is an AMOLED display and I think with the Vivo Z1X if you just take a look at the display and especially if you apply dark wallpapers you realize that the display is one of the best parts of the Vivo Z1X and one of my favorite upgrades over the Vivo Z1 Pro. Now moving to software, you have the Vivo Z1 X running FunTouch OS built on top of Android 9 Pi. Now while most other smartphones are waiting for Android Q to implement dark mode, Vivo has already done it and it does look pretty good. Primarily because this is system-wide dark mode, which means that it's not just the notification panel or the quick settings panel, but also the display where even you go to the settings page or any other page, even third-party apps like Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp all have become dark. Now, the thing that I don't necessarily like with the dark mode is that I don't have the option to choose which apps apply dark mode on. Because while I like how the entire UI looks, I do not like how Instagram, Facebook or WhatsApp look with dark mode on, which means that I eventually end up not using the dark mode at all on this phone. Apart from that though, FunTouch OS has come a long way in enhancing user experience and while it's no Oxygen OS, there are a few cool things. You have different parts saving modes inside the OS which makes sure that you have maximum battery life out of this. You also have a theme store. One thing that I've almost always skipped is the glance screen which is on the lock screen. Um, you can actually change the wallpaper so every time you unlock the phone you'll have a different photo. These are high resolution photos first of all but these are not just photos. So basically if you see this shot right now you'll see that you'll there were pictures uh, that were from teachers day that were teachers day theme. So whenever there's something going on, the pictures that come on your lock screen do look pretty nice. And these are, as I said, not just pictures, not even just theme based, but these are articles as well. So if you look at the bottom of that lock screen, you'll see that there are small little quotes or small little phrases from articles. And these are links to articles which vary to different regions. So what you can do is you can go into the settings of this lock screen and even choose what are the topics that you like and you like to read about, which means that if I only choose technology or lifestyle, then I'll only get pictures and articles linking 
to tech or lifestyle. There is certainly bloatware on the phone. There are apps that you might use like WhatsApp and Instagram and Facebook, but then there are apps that you might never use. It's just something that you'll have to live with. Uh, but I don't think they'll be a big problem when you start using the device. This also supports Project Treble, although it does not support seamless updates. You do get a skin on top and the history of updates with Funtouch OS is not extremely good, but is not bad at all. They do provide updates uh, and they've done very well with previous phones, with the camera apps, any bugs that happen. So I think you should have a good enough experience with the Funtouch OS on the Vivo Z1X. Moving to performance, the Snapdragon 712 AIE powers the new Z1X just like the older Z1 Pro, which means that the performance is pretty similar to it. This is also reflected in the benchmark scores, which stay in the same range of the 712, not any higher or any lower. Playing PUBG or PES Mobile is super fun, especially with this AMOLED display, which gives me those deep blacks when I'm playing those night scenes in PUBG. And it also gives me those punchy colors on the field with the players and all when I'm playing PES Mobile. The touch sensitivity is very good. And they have used UFS 2.1 storage inside with LPDDR4X RAM, which means that performance from the memory aspect, the storage aspect, and the processor aspect is pretty damn good. And some of the best that you can get under 20,000 rupees. Now, day-to-day -day performance is something that I don't think we'll have a problem with in almost any of the phones under 20,000. We have processors like Snapdragon 712, 710, 675, 660, all of them being quite powerful and with everyday usage, you literally should not have a single problem. Moving to cameras, you have a triple camera setup at the back and you have a single camera at the front. Now the front camera is a 32 megapixel sensor. It's the Samsung uh, sensor. And at the back, the main camera is now a 48 megapixel sensor. It's not the Sony IMX586. It's the Sony IMX582. And the only difference between these two sensors is that they, the 582 cannot shoot 4K at 60 FPS. That said, I don't think that's gonna be a problem here because the 712, the Snapdragon 712, um, inherently is not able to shoot 4K at 60 FPS. Now the sensors on the Z1X are actually pretty damn good. You also have another wide angle sensor and a bokeh sensor for depth effect. Now talking about those pictures, just take a look at these pictures. Vivo has been working very damn hard on all their camera algorithms. So have a lot of other companies as well, but Vivo has been doing a phenomenal job both with the pictures that come out and also with the camera experience and the pictures truly speak lengths about it. Because if you look at these pictures, the contrast ratios, the colors, the details, everything is right there. You have so many features inside the Vivo camera app, like portrait modes, different type of portrait modes if you want. You have the ability to switch to wide angle camera. You can shoot video through wide angle camera. You have stabilization in the footage. There's almost nothing else that you can ask for in this price range. Uh, now, looking at these pictures, looking at the portrait shot, the cutout is very, very nice. But I am a big fan of that wide angle camera. And here are pictures taken using that wide angle camera, both in broad daylight and in indoors. And what you can see is that in broad daylight, the fact that the HDR algorithm is making sure that it not just takes the subject in focus and the exposure is done well, but also the background. If you just see here in this picture of Ashish, you can see how the sky looks pretty damn phenomenal. So I think I do like the Z1X's camera a lot. And especially with Vivo's camera app, not just giving you good features for a photographer's use, but also giving you ton of other features that everyday users can use. I think Vivo has done a phenomenal job with the camera and the fact that you can get 4K footage out of the front camera of the Vivo Z1X makes it one of the very few devices under 20,000 that can do that. And the 4K footage, of course, is not stabilized, but it's 4K for God's sake. All in all, I think the Vivo Z1X's camera is one of my favorites that I've used under 20,000 and could give a tough competition to others out there. The Z1X goes with a smaller 4500mAh battery this time around compared to a 5000mAh battery in the Z1 Pro. Now is that drop too bad? Not really because while you get a smaller battery, you also get a smaller display and it's also AMOLED which means with dark mode on and a darker wallpaper, 
you'll end up saving battery life a lot. I experienced equally good if not better battery life compared to the Z1 Pro. My battery experience was second to none and when it comes to charging we have an even bigger 22.5 watt charger which also officially makes it the biggest or the most wattage on a charger under 20,000 in a smartphone. To which I say Vivo are you freaking crazy because you're giving that charger and that 4500 mAh battery which is actually above the average of the industry gets charged up in almost 1 hour 30 minutes plus or minus 5 minutes that is the charging time that I got with that 22.5 watt charger uh, Vivo's dual engine charging is something that I've loved for a long time and the Z1X's battery performance is a tough one to beat now we come to an end of this video and the Vivo Z1X is an absolutely phenomenal package. It's an all-rounder. You get that gorgeous design which is also comfortable in the hand. You have a triple camera setup at the back. You have the AMOLED display up front which also gives you those inky plaques. You have wide vinyl one support. You also have the ability to play HDR videos on YouTube as well. You also get fun touch OS with dark mode built on top of Android 9 by USB type C 4500mAh battery and 20 2.5 watt fast charging with the Snapdragon 712 AIE and I think all that rounds up to a very good package now are there competitors of course we are in India we're talking about the Indian smartphone markets everyone has a competitor here now with the Vivo Z1 X's price of the 16990 the competitor that's the closest to it is the Realme X now compared to the Realme X the Z1X has a better processor on paper, which is slightly a better processor, which is a Snapdragon 712 compared to the Realme X, which is a Snapdragon 710. It also has more cameras technically. Which one is better is something that we'll have to test out in a camera comparison. Let us know if you want to see that. But what I can say is that both of them are very, very good cameras. The Z1X has an edge because it also has a wide angle camera. Now we move to the display and this is where the Realme X maybe takes the cake because it has a full screen AMOLED display, which only very few under 20,000 have it has a pop-up camera for selfie though uh, you get the same USB type C you get 20 watt charging compared to 22.5 watts that's not really a big difference but the Z1X has a bigger battery than the Realme X that said there's another phone that's coming very soon and that is the Realme XT which is the upgrade to the Realme X and when compared to the Realme XT this is a very very similar device because the Realme XT is rumored to have an AMOLED display just like this one with a small notch just like this one it has the Snapdragon 712 just like this one you also have USB type C 20 watt charging I'm guessing with the XT uh, very close to this one again of course you get different experience with the software but you get a quad camera setup on the Realme XT with the main camera being a 64 megapixel sensor which also will make the XT one of the very first devices in the market to come with a 64 megapixel sensor so there is a difference so what I'd suggest compared to the Realme XT if you really like the sound of it is that you can wait around till the launch of the Realme XT which is also very soon and once you have that you'll have context on which one you like we'll also do a comparison for you guys of course apart from that I think uh, not really a competitor but another choice is the Vivo Z1 Pro uh, the brand's own device which has pretty much similar specs so you'll have the same kind of performance from it it has a bigger display but that's an LCD display with a punch hole you have a bigger battery but the battery life will be very similar but I think the cameras on the Vivo Z1X are really something that's worth that price upgrade then there is of course the Realme 5 Pro again with the same Snapdragon 712 um, which is 1000 rupees lower than the Vivo Z1 Pro as well again LCD display not an AMOLED display quad cameras with a 48 megapixel sensor that said it's not really a competitor but another choice at a slightly lower price but I still think the Vivo Z1X is a complete package and for someone looking to buy a phone under 20,000 right now the Z1X is one of the best devices that you can buy and with that I leave you to it Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section if you liked this review, what was your favorite part of the Vivo Z1X. If you didn't like something, let us know in the comment section below. What phones do you want us to compare to the Z1X? Please let us know in the comment section.